Hey team, welcome to a nippers, yeah, another episode. I'm gonna leave it in there. Gonna leave it in there. Welcome to <laughs> another episode of the Rugby League Lounge a weekly show. Off to a five a start, and today, well, once again, I'm joined by Joel from League of Inches. How are you going today, my man? Go the Blues, up the mighty Blues. Have to get in there straight away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, knew it was gonna happen. Dominant performance, but won both games. Up in Queens, and you know what? You can pay eight million dollars and have the third one if you want. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to you. Tell you what, credit to you. You know, I wasn't give you, I wasn't going to give you a chance to kind of have your, have your say, <laughs> and you took your opportunity with both hands. So well done. But it kind of does get to what we're going to be talking today, team. Um, we're going to be talking about basically if the Australian team was picked tomorrow, the Australian squad which um, hopefully we've got a World Cup at the end of the year. Um, there's been a little bit of arguments of that is going to go ahead. But if that was picked today, who would be in the team? And kind of dissecting it through the origin lens, the lineup, and basically how many Blues are going to be in there? And if any, how many Maroons are going to be? And then let's just get started straight into the back line. If we go to the back line, I think the consensus is if you're making a starting back line, six out of the seven guys will be Blues. And... Yeah, what is your thoughts on that, Joel? You tend to agree with that? Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty much exactly the same. So um, we'll, go, we'll just go through it. So it would be Teddy at the back, obviously, and your two wingers, Ed O'Carr and Brian To'o. Now, we're not going to go over the whole Samoa stuff if, like, Brian To'o and Jerome Luai, if they decide to go to Samoa, because it's just a bit too, you know, just we'll just be kind of ruling everyone out. We might rule Junior Paulo out or anyone, so... Just if it was just basically, yep, playing for Australia, these guys are going to be picked. So, yeah, you got Brian To'o, James D. Oh, so everyone's playing for Australia in this? Yeah, even, even the Kiwis as okay. well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. everyone who played for Origin are going to be eligible to, in this video. Everyone who's played Origin yeah. is basically an Australian player. Summarise, beautiful. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be putting seven of the seven then. Seven of the seven? So you'd go yeah. a little way over Munster. At the moment, I would be. And look, I wouldn't argue. And if <laughs> I was to do that, I think Munster would great be a great value off the utility. It's just an argument like, even though, yes, he's not in the best form, like on his day, he's arguably the best big match player in the game, as we saw last year, arguably a top five player in the game, is, you know, all that stuff. So I understand your view, and I think he would, and then if, you go that angle when Luai is your six. Munster will be perfect at 14 because he can come on. He can change a game. He can go to fullback if need. He can even play. He can be a ball playing forward. Um, so, yeah, I think, and if you're picking a squad, you probably, obviously, you'd have, look, you'd, you'd have your seven New South Wales players. You'd have Munster. You'd probably need someone covering your back three. Like, who would you... Would you have Holmes? Would Holmes get a shout? Would Would Pappy get in there? If you had just um, um, for the um, look, to the three. I know you. You. I'll, I'll say the reasons why I like Luai Cleary, and I'd keep it that way if Luai ended up changing over to Australia. Um, and this one, we're, we're assuming he does so. But hmm. I just reckon the whole setup for Luai and Cleary, their combination is so far above everyone else at the moment, you have to do it. I'm all about combos in um, the rep level. Um, for mine, it just has to be those two no matter what. Cameron Munster, for mine, has had some little things going in his game over the last month or so, which isn't Cameron Munster-like. And I think there's maybe some things behind the scenes, saying I'm not too sure, but he looks like he's a player that does want a little bit of a break and that might be the thing that happens at the end of the year. That could be his little break. He just needs to get away from footy for about a month or two and just have some cocktails at Bali or something, if, even though you can't get there. But somehow get him in a submarine, get him over there, let him relax, let him have some fun. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd be sticking to Whiten as my 14 if we're going to chuck the 14, just because he can cover that backline areas a bit better than what Munster can. Like I'm talking about a centre or... At worst, winger, we can push one of the centres to winger and then Whiten can go there. Whiten can even play fullback really well as well. He used to be a fullback. So I'd put, without sounding too biased, so I'm just trying to do it with the selector's hat on, I'd def, I'd probably go all those eight players so far um, in my Australian side. 
Yeah, the Australian side, yeah. And I'm sure, could you put months in your squad at all? Uh, well, look, as I just said, I feel like he actually needs a break. Um, and that's not, if, if Munster gets back to his form, but over, uh, in the next month or two, I'd definitely have him in the side. Um, he could be probably a six. He, it, it, it just depends. But he's obviously a class player. I just feel like personally watching him at the moment, without him saying it, it seems like he wants a break. Like in that, in that press conference, uh, the interview, sorry, at halftime on game two, State of Origin on Sunday, he basically was just giving it to his players and you just, you don't hear that, which it was good to hear the honesty. Don't get me wrong, but that's not normally an interview that he'd normally say, or no. there's obviously some real big frustrations going on there at the moment. I guess it's probably got, to, a lot of people have been saying it's him and Jerry Evans, but it's an interesting case. And yeah, for mine, I just, I've got to go the, the blue, blue wall for my back line. Yeah, no, nah, fair, cool. Um, it follows kind of the round out of squad, I think. It's pretty hard to work out the numbers. I think they do 24, 24 men in um, at all. So I think, yeah, I think you'd probably do your eight. I think Wyden does probably earn a spot there. I'd probably, and then it's tough because then I think you probably do need a cover at halfback with Cherry Evans. Um, Munster would be in my team somewhere. And then you need probably a wing cover, um, maybe Valentine Holmes. So it's tough. Is there any outside back that you think, if we get an injury, this guy needs to be in there. That can cover the wing fullback centre role. Well, either uh, or. Pappy's Val versus... Holmes. Yeah. Val, Val Holmes is is one, but more so for the winger. Uh, I don't mind Coates if we've got to sort of pick him off his origin sides. Um, I think with a bit more confidence, he might play well. But he just looks like he's shot with confidence at the moment. I still feel a bit sorry for him because I do rate him as a winger. I think he's one of the best in the game. Um I just don't think that the current halves of the Maroons are playing to his strength, which is giving him the high ball. No one can get close to, to him when he jumps up. So um, one of those would probably have to be it, I, I'd say, because otherwise I'd have one for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. And, yeah, we'll go on to, we'll go on to the hooking role. I believe you just go Harry Grant and um, Damien Cook. Any arguments there? Nah, nah, Harry Grant, Damien Cook for sure. Uh, I'm exactly the same there. Um, you fit yeah, Hunt in other... somewhere? What was that, Hunt? Yeah. Uh, I'd probably go, I'd probably go Reed Marnie um, before I'd go Hunt. Um, and it just depends how Grant's end of season goes because a lot of the time you'll see with the clubs, they ask their players to, to take off the end of year rep especially if they had some injuries during the year, they want to get him really good and, and right. So it'll just be interesting what happens with um, Harry Green. And I guess if he's out and they put Reed in, then, yeah, you'd probably go Hunt as well just to cover the halves again. Yeah, and that's probably why I'd go over go Hunt over um, Reed, just because I think Reed is probably the better, better hooker. Well, he is in yeah. my eyes. But, yeah, just that, that cover, especially when you've got a 24 man squad and sometimes versatility. That's why I think just going back to Brian Pappenhausen, obviously not part of the blue side, but definitely in the mix, he probably can only play um, fullback. Yes, you can bring him on as a 14, but if you get an injury at wing, you probably have to shift to over the wing. And, you know, so your versatility is probably one of the main takeaways from this video. It's going to be very key when we're picking these sides. And even though Jack White is not in great form, that's definitely going to be a cap to his bow. And let's just go to the middle forwards, the big boppers. Um, yeah, let's look, let's look at the Blues big boys. So you've got Safidi, you've got Jake, um, you've got Jake Travojevic, you've got Payne Haas, Junior Paulo, and there was someone else I'm missing. Uh, anyone else I'm missing in particular here? Big, big bopper. Might just yeah, be... Cr Crichton played it. Crichton, yeah, I think I'd probably focus him on the edge, but if you got Safidi, yeah, Safidi, Jakey, um, Payne Haas, and Junior Paulo. Yeah. They've all got to get in there somehow, don't they? Yeah, well, if this is Australian side, you, yeah, you think so, but at the same time, I'd also have Welch, uh, Christian Welsh in there, so I think he's been playing really well this year. Uh, I'd... <sighs> It's a hard one. I'd probably have Welsh and Trebojevic start. 
mm-hmm. um, just because of the way the game is these days. I think Trevojevic suited that role. And then it's it's between... Um, oh, so, f- so just to, I pause, think- just to pause there, I kind of did some working out before. Basically, I had my little list down and you could have, um, I believe it was four four big boys and three guys that can play lock. So I had for my four guys, I, I slotted Jake to my 13 role um, that if he needed to play there. And I basically had Junior Paulo, Payne Haas, um, Christian Welch, and I got a little bit biased here. I picked Papali over Safiti, which seems huge. But I just think... When Papali's on form, he's a better player than Safidi, and I feel like they kind of bring the same stuff, and I like the offloading that Junior Paulo that brings out, and I just like the toiler nature that Christian Welch is, but it's very tough. So if you had to pick four, excluding Jake, and those are probably five really very worthy candidates, who's the one you'd who's the one that'd miss out? For me, I'm harshly leaving out Safiti. Yeah, I'd be the same. I yeah. believe out here. Yeah. yeah. And he's probably been. I don't think that'll that... happen, though. Yeah. But I he's. Never... Happen because I don't think Papali will get in. I don't. I think they'll go Safidi over Papali at the moment. Yeah. And right now, it probably is Safidi. I'm probably yeah. just predicting Papali to roll on. But if we're picking the size today, Papali's probably also got that relationship with Mal and Ben Nozzy. But you got to find Christian Welch in there, too. So, yeah. Um, And then we'll probably, yeah, moving. I basically, because I've just looked at former squads and. Looking at you're gonna have a couple of players that can be a bit more versatile in that middle role. So Isaiah Yo, Cameron Murray, and Jake Javovich is the other three guys I looked at. Victor Radley's another guy that you could throw in there, but I think obviously base of health and also a little bit of that mung, a bit of those bad habits with Victor Radley getting in trouble and not having played rep footy yet. I had to go after them three. Do that sound about right for you? Is there anyone in that kind of lock category that you'd consider? Ah. Uh... I'd probably just, if you were moving to boy Jake, I'd put Jake as my first preference if you've taken him from the prop. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Isaiah Yo would be be second for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair, cool. Yeah, I think, I think obviously looking to the lineup, I really liked what Isaiah Yo brought um, to the to their team. So, yeah, um, I think, yeah, and then I think Cam Murray has to be in there. And he he, he yeah. also great because he can cover the edges. Um, and then, I'd have him as an edge. Yeah. You have him just straight edge? At the moment. Yeah. I think he did a really good job there in origin. Um, I think he's now shown a bit of versatility, which I don't think many of us knew he had. I thought we're over on you thought he was just a middle forward that could sort of ball play here and there. But, geez, he held his edge well and kept the feet quiet for both games. All right. So we'll, we'll lead into that. So if you had to pick... Just kind of as I've done, I've just kind of had a rough look, and basically it's three to four edge players. Um, and if you've got Camera as one edge, who do you think off the top of your head? Probably looking at those origin sides, who would you yeah, lock in? Man. I think I think it is actually probably the toughest to pick. Yeah, um, I'd probably go Murray and Crichton. Yep. Um, and then. Sims was huge. Sims is a player which I was questioning, but he's very good in one, in these series where there's one-off games. He gets a bit of a break. Or uh, Obviously, World Cup is a bit different. It's obviously pretty much played weekly, so he has to be up. I'd have him maybe on the bench, but I'd also have probably Dave Fafita as well um, as the other bench um, second row, just because of how damaging it can be. He won't have someone like Cam Murray as his opposition who can control him. Yeah, it's funny because yeah, like I like as we've seen, Cam Murray's great on the edge. I just really like him to be utilized in the middle because I do think that's his best position. But he was so good there. Um, look, I think Fafita and Croydon would definitely be in there for me. I just like if Fafita and Croydon, who'd be next up? Like, do you go with a? It's hard to kind of go with a Kafusi after you know not really wowing me in the origin and. Honestly, a guy I'd consider there is a Queenslander, and his name's Kurt Capewell. Yeah, move him from centre. Um, he could be a good bench player, actually, Capewell, because yep. he can cover both backs. And so he could be an, a roughy for, for a 14 if you were to change up drastically. He could be so, a roughy. So I made a good um, point. 
point the other day where as his career like because is he he potentially going to the Broncos, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Apparently they um I I've I read last week that they pretty much signed him. So could you see him as a thirteen? Yeah, yeah, I could. Um I don't think yet. I think a little bit a few more years and he definitely could be. I think at the moment he still has that um, bit of speed in that to be out wide and damaging, but can definitely see him come into lock. But I think once he did that, I think his rep career would sort of go down a bit because there's too many good locks and there's some really good young locks out there. Yeah, true. Yeah. So did you end up saying you'd reckon you'd go with Tarek Sims or you just... On the bench. On yeah. The bench. Yeah. I think you just have to, like, for mine, especially as a, on a World Cup, this... I see club games, I see city country, then I see origin, and then I see World Cup, Australia, and, and vice versa. If they're using this as the the only good thing for Queensland is, is that Mal is pretty loyal. And he has a soft spot for a lot of um, Queensland players. So he might stick to people like Pafuti because they've done the job in the past where I'm one of those ones where I just think you go with the form players. And at the moment... I say this to everyone I speak to about rep level things who message my page and everything. I say you keep with top teams. Um, so it's people like Penrith, you put as many Penrith players as you can in that side um, and then you fill in the spot gaps. You make sure there's a there's room for people like Latrell. You make sure there's room for Tom Trebojevic. Um, and then you go the rest and you go off the Origin Series, who played best, Um and for mine, I just think Tarek Sims went to a level which not many of us knew that he had and exactly the reason why Freddie picked him. And I'd have to have him on the bench, come on for 25, 30 minutes and just cause havoc on an edge. Yeah, and I guess the guy that's kind of missed, you know, we've I've just completely forgotten about and I only just fought him there, was a guy that has missed origin because of injury and Tarek Sims has definitely taken advantage of him not being there. And it's Tyson Frizzell. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's a guy that's normally a shoe, and he's one of the few New South Wales guys that are genuine certainties to be in that team. So, yeah. And Tarek Sims, like, it's just interesting because, like, like you said, like he wasn't even in conversation for New South Wales from my end. Like, I didn't consider him. And I, it's not to say he wasn't playing that bad. It was just a little, you know, there's just names in front of him. So, yeah, he, he was a real tough name when I was actually looking down and thinking, well, I have this guy on my team and yeah, there's still something there, but hey, he's proven it on the biggest stage. Uh, that's not rep footy. And he was the standout back row consistently over the two games for me. Set up that great try in game one and then had one of the most influential plays in game two when he did that carry off the off the third tackle. Um, that was a huge run, huge run. Um, but yeah, and just, just to finish off here, I think, you brought up a great point about winning. You don't have to teach them how to win. They making sick. They know how, what sacrifice are made to win, and that's why your your strategy of picking guys that have been winning, um, winning teams are, you know, is crucial. Like the only guy I can think of that is not on a winning team that you've got to have in there, um, that's in the bottom end of the ladder is probably Payne Hearts. And he's mm. been unfortunate because he's a young bloke. But when he's been in an environment, you saw what he's done for New South Wales. Um, is there anyone else that you think you have to make an exception for that's in a losing side? Um, we're probably obviously going over them, but he's probably... Not really. I think it's it's more so just about... Game three is, is massive pressure. If, if Queensland need some... or their, their players need any sort of motivation to get up for this one, it's the fact that if this World Cup does go ahead, they need to have some players in there. And at the moment, if you've been fair income, they're lucky to have one, maximum two players in mm. the side at the moment. That if, if that ends up happening, that will be a disgrace for Queensland Rugby League where it's at at the moment. They've got their teams not doing too well. Um, their best team is obviously the Storm, which is a makeup of um, a few Queensland <laughs> players, but they don't like to be associated. They're, they're a Victorian-based side. Um, so at the moment, yeah, there's some massive problems there if this doesn't happen. If look, if game three goes the way the other two games go, you just have to have as many blues as possible. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, man. I as a Queensland fan, it hurts me to agree with you, but yeah, you got a solid argument there. And um, yeah, I really appreciate it, Joe. We're gonna finish it up there. 
got a bit limited time today, but once again, mate, thank you very much. Go check out Lee of Inches. It's a great page, and I'm very much looking forward to the future collaborations. We've got a kind of a good little thing going on here, and, yeah, it's really made kind of my introduction to this page. Yeah, way more enjoyable being able to do it with someone else. So, yeah, appreciate it, brother. No worries at all. Thank you. You're doing great things. So thanks to everyone who keeps following us. But, yeah, keep following Luke. He's doing some fantastic things. Cheers, man. Awesome, guys. Have a good week.